upside down. Nah. Bit big. Here we go again. Let's drink some whiskey. Welcome to Whiskey and Whiskey. I'm the Whiskey Chaser Brian, and on this show, I review whiskey without giving it an actual score. So basically me drinking whiskey on camera for you to make an informed decision. Irish whiskey for the moment. And welcome to Christie's Bar, the home of whiskey and whiskey. Many thanks to the lads here for allowing me to uh, take over and drink some of their fine whiskey. I'll leave a link down below to where you can find this place. And uh, don't forget, of course, to subscribe. On today's show, not one, not two, but three of Powers Irish Whiskey. And we're looking at the premium range here. We have the Three Swallows, the Signature Release, and the 12-year-old John's Lane Release. Now, the three-year-old, uh, the Three Swallows and the John's Lane are readily available. You will find these almost everywhere, and stateside, Ireland, most pubs. The signature release might be a little bit more difficult to find. It is a discontinued whiskey. However, you can still find it. It is still available in pubs and shops, which is why I've included it today. Now, all three of these are single pot stills and are slightly different expressions from one another. But we'll go through, we'll have a little drink and we'll try them out and I'll give you my thoughts and my opinions on them as I always do. If you do have any comments or you, there is a particular type of these whiskeys that you like, leave a comment down below. Now, these are the old style bottles. I don't have any of the new style bottlings yet. They have changed their appearance a slight bit, but I'll put a picture up as we're going through them and you'll be able to see what the newer ones look like. A Little bit different, a little bit of a different design. I'll save it for another video. This is their core range. What we're not going to do is not going to do their standard uh, powers. Uh, leave that for a specific video that I want to do into the future where I'll go through that a little bit more. So keep your eye on the page. Make sure you subscribe and turn on the notifications and keep up to date because I will be doing videos or a video particularly on that whiskey. I'm just not doing it right now. A little bit of history before we get into drinking the powers and we'll start off of course with James Power back in the 1790s who was an innkeeper and decided he wanted to start distilling. He started a distillery in his innkeeping house of uh, the first year was 6,000 gallons was what he brought out or what he produced. 1791 was the year in which John's Lane Distillery was, was founded by James Power and it wasn't until 1822 that the company went from James Power and Son to John Power and Son. Throughout the years, there's been a number of changes, mostly outputting. So we look at the 1830s, um, roughly 1833, and the distillery was outputting about 160,000 gallons of uh, distillate a year. And in between the 18th 30s and 1890s, there was a lot of laws that had changed in Ireland over distilling, which allowed them to expand. They obviously built, as the Irish whiskey became more popular, they were able to expand the distillery, build the distillery, and their output grew then to about 900,000 gallons a year. The Powers family were at the forefront of technology and innovation. In 1886, they were the first distillery in Ireland to bottle their own whiskey and one of the first in the world to actually do so. What they found was that in those times, it was common for merchants and bonders to come to the distillery with their own casks, fill the casks with new make, and then go back to their, their respective towns. What happened after a while was they found that some of these were underhanded, a little bit sneaky, and what they would do was they would water down the whiskey, or they would mix it in certain ways that, it, that the Powers company didn't want. What it became was actually a quality control issue. What they wanted to do was bottle it all inside and adorn it with a gold label, which was, a at the, at the time, a sure show that it came from the distillery, it was bottled by the distillery. All other labels that were released at that time were white labels because they were from merchants and bonders. So the distillery had the gold label, which meant it was quality. You, the customer knew what they were getting. In 1889, 
They also were a first in bringing out a, what we call today as a Baby Powers, which was a 71 mil little tiny miniature bottle of their gold label. And what the, the thinking behind this was that they were bringing this out for the common folk. Whiskey was expensive back then and money wasn't really, a lot of spare money wasn't there back in the day. So it was giving the regular Joe Soap, the regular whiskey drinker, a chance to actually try and enjoy the gold label or the standard whiskey that they had released. And with that as well, they were one of the first in Ireland to actually, there's a gold uh, diamond P, and they were one of the first companies in Ireland to actually trademark the P, which is, you know, back in the day, there wasn't too much of that going on. The late 1880s was also the time in which, um, if you haven't heard from Alfred Barnard, who was a British historian, traveled the length and breadth of uh, England, Scotland, and Ireland, he recording all the distilleries that were open and producing whiskey and scotch at the time. And he remarked that uh, the Johns Lane Distillery in Dublin was one of the finest distilleries he had ever seen. It was clean, it was technologically advanced, and it was about as complete as a work that could be found. So he was impressed. They, look, he did 126 distilleries. It took him two years to travel the, the, the country um, and it, it, the book ended up being over 500 pages. And the book is aptly called The Whiskey Distilleries of the United Kingdom. If you want to jump into how the powers actually looked at, looked after their staff, I mean, you have to understand what I'm doing here is I'm just telling, giving you a very brief overview of uh, powers whiskey and a little bit of the history. There is so much more information out there that I, you know, don't really have time to kind of get into that you should research yourself and you'll see just, you know, how big and how innovative and advanced they were as a company for that time. They looked after their staff so incredibly well. Um, they introduced a food hall. They uh, built accommodation for seasonal workers that were coming from the countryside to come in so that they wouldn't have to put up with Dublin landlords and spend all their hard earned cash on rent. Their theology was a happy cur a worker is a good worker. They introduced actually was the first company to introduce staff parties where they would shut down the distillery for an entire day and bring all the staff out to their estate and you know wine and dine as we call it today and look after the music and parties and stuff like that. You have to look at it as a whole. As a company, they were innovative and moved forward. Uh, they looked after their customers by assuring quality. And of course they looked after the staff, happy staff or happy workers, happy workers or productive workers. So there you go. A little bit of a background, a little bit of a history. There are more bits and pieces out there, but look, I implore you, check it out yourself because it does make for actually really interesting and good quality reading. Now, let's jump in and have a look at the whiskeys. Before we do, which one of these do you like to drink? Are you Three Swallows, a Signature, or a John's Lane fan? What's your favorite whiskey? Leave a comment down below and let me know. So what we have is a selection here of the more premium end of the core range of Powers whiskey. The first two are non-age statements, single pot stills, and the last one, the John's Lane, is an age statement. It's the only age statement. It's a 12-year-old single pot still. All three are non-chill filtered, and doing my research, I have found that all three do, in fact, have a little bit of coloring in them. Look, that's the way it is. I'm not going to judge a whiskey because it has a little bit of coloring in it, but whatever. Jumping in firstly to the three swallows. When I started drinking whiskey, this was one of the whiskeys that it kind of stood out. And it stood out because it is an, a, a budget entry single pot still. You're looking in between in Ireland around the 35 euro mark. Now, are you going to get everything you get in the 12? Of course not, no. It's, you know, like I said, a non-age statement. It's in or around the six year mark is the, the youngest whiskey. So, you know, it is that kind of youngness to it. So this was brought out in 2019 and basically it's a modern representation of what the old Powers whiskey would have tasted like. It's predominantly finished in ex-bourbon and Oloroso sherry barrels. 40% ABV, as I said, non-chill non -chill filtered, triple distilled in Middleton Distillery in Middleton. Uh, these are Irish Distillers products. We have done Irish Distillers products before. Irish Distillers are Jemson, Middleton Very Rare, Green Spot, Red Breast, Patty, and of course, Powers. Let's have a little nose of this. That is beautiful. First of all, pot still whiskey straight away. It has the lovely spices to it. I'm getting uh, hints of ripe fruits. So there is a lovely apple kind of nose to this. We're moving in then a little bit of kind of banana peel, very vanilla-y, 
There's not as much spice on it as you would think for a pot still whiskey. Not really sure, but uh, from some of the research and some of the things that I read, it's in or around the six year old. Tiny little bit of barley, like as it is that young, I'm gonna get, you know, you will get a little bit of that new makey, kind of new spirity kind of nose to it. It is quite delicate, as in, um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say this is a very complex style or, or expression from the Powers range, but nonetheless quite, you know, I get that like creaminess to it. So let's have a little taste, Slauncher. First of all, pot still spices. Um, kind of like a light pepper dusting of, of, of spice. I'm getting honey, I'm getting cloves, touch of clove, get a little bit of that green apple, a little bit of the vanilla, the finish, although, is a little bit bitter, touch bitter, nothing overly extreme, but long lasting. Uh, I still have the heat from the initial. Not too sweet, nicely sweet, but more so bitter than sweet. It's light. The mouthfeel, it's very light. It's very delicate. It's not very um, complex by any means. Still getting that green apple loveliness to it. As I said before, yeah, uh, on the second mouthful, a lot more of the clove, kind of uh, even clove oil, but very light on the palate, very thin, peppery spice. It's nicely balanced, but the bitterness at the end now is a little bit more prevalent. Uh, I'm not gonna add water into these, I don't think. Um, these are all, none of these are cast strength. Um, I don't particularly like, as I said before, a number of times, I don't like adding water to my whiskey. I never do it at home when I'm sampling, so I'm not really gonna do it here. But for around the 35 euro mark, you're getting a very, uh, for, that, for that price range, you're getting a well-balanced Irish pot still whiskey. Gonna move on to the signature release now. Sadly discontinued. I, a huge favorite amongst whiskey fans here in Ireland and Powers fans in particular. This whiskey is 46% ABV. It's non-chill filtered, single pot still. As I said before, a little bit of coloring in it. Uh, was in around the 55 euro mark, you know, for a premium blend or a premium pot still whiskey. Um, that was good value. Matured mainly in ex-bourbon, first fill bourbon and Oloroso sherry barrels. Um, Non-age statement, as I said, a little bit of coloring in it. From my research turned up between seven to nine years of maturation on this, where this one was quite bright and young. You're starting to get a little bit more sweetness and kind of a rounded nose to it. Certainly a lot more nutty and vanilla-y. And when I say rounded, it's a little bit more drier, if that makes sense, kind of coming across on the nose. Almost like it's, it's, it's just that little bit thicker on the nose, not as thin. A very delicate, very light hint of stone fruits, like, like a raisiny note to it. Uh, still getting a little bit of a hint, a very, very slight hint of, uh, of clove. Still getting a little bit of that apple note that has come across from the Three Swallows as well. Um, not as spicy as you would think either. The spices ramped up a small bit, a touch. Not, not, it hasn't elevated massively now. All right, let's have a little drink. Slodger. Now we've changed. We've come a little bit from applesy bananas to more of a nutmeg, more of a cinnamon, more of a stone fruits, more of a oiliness. Very dense kind of, you know, a lot more oily than the, the, the Three Swallows. It's still sweet, it's nicely sweet, not so much bitter. Well balanced across the entire palate. Finishes is nice, a nice bit of heat, nice bit of sweet, still on the tongue. A Little bit oaky, a little bit barley-ish, if I would say that, nice in a nice way, a nice sweet barley. Kind of almost like, um, like biscuits, biscuity. Lovely, candied fruits, a hint of the raisin, and even, I would say more raisins than figs, but it's kind of like, for me, you know, I'm, I'm finding it hard to decipher that, just a, just a touch. Nice finish to it. You can see why this would be a favorite amongst whiskey drinkers. Uh, first of all, it's a premium product. It's great value in around the 50 euro, 55 euro mark, if you do find one. It's a well-balanced, oily, juicy, lovely finished, caramel, honeyish finish to it. It's like that sweetness is still there along with the spice at the back. I can see why that'd be a favorite. Absolutely, give it my thumbs up. And I wouldn't have really drank too much of the signature release. I don't know, I always tended to go towards the John's Lane, 12 year old. So now we move on to what was my favorite, the John's Lane, which is the first and only age statement in the lineup here. 12 year old, single pot still, non-chill filtered, 46% ABB, ABV. 
a mixture of ex bourbon, first fill bourbon, and Alarasso sherry. There's a little bit of coloring in this. I don't know that I say it, but it's non chill filtered as well. The oldest in the range, the, the oldest, the youngest pot still whiskey in this is 12 years old. Retails on a good day in or around the 60, 65 euro mark. I'll put actually, what I'll do is while I'm drinking these, I'll put a picture of the new style bottles up for the Three Swallows and the John's Lane just so that you can see what they look like now with their, they, they do come with these lovely tubes and the, the, the box in the John's Lane, the old school one, you used to get a pullout which was a lovely write-up of what Alfred Barnard actually wrote in his The Whiskies of the United Kingdom and uh, The Whiskey Distilleries of the United Kingdom. And on his back was, on the back of it was a giant uh, poster or picture of what they depicted the John's Lane and he put it in his book. I'll leave a picture of it up on the screen now for you so you can see it. But this whiskey, uh, this is my favorite. I always, always have this in the collection and open, ready. Uh, yeah, a lot more tobacco, chocolate, Stone fruits, you know, it's a mixture now. It's it's a lot more of the raisins and the figs and uh, those kind of dark fruits. It's lovely. It's a little bit of um, caramel, cinnamon, butterscotch even. Uh, it's just so complex. You could really genuinely sit down now for the evening and have a go at this and you would keep pulling out different aromas. Oh, it's just something I could nose all day. Slancha. Mm -mm. A little bit more spices now, but it's met with this oiliness and this mouth coating where I can definitely taste a lot more of the kind of, um, there's even a hint of orange peel in there, which is strange. But I get the, the cocoa or the chocolate and a little bit of tobacco and there's a dried fruit in there. That's what it, it's like an apricot jam for all the world. The finish is just beautiful. It's sweet, not too much oak or barley or anything like that. There's hints of it, but nothing major that sticks out or jumps out. Ah, oh, it's very good. It's very good. Of course it's good. It's my favorite in the range. Ah, oh, you get a, a lot more kind of a creaminess, a cream soda kind of vibe from the, the signature release. Then the clove, kind of clovey lightness. You get the lightness then from the three swallows. As you're kind of moving up along, it does, they get a little bit more dense. Obviously they're evolving because you know, you're going up that we're, we're eventually getting to the, the 12 year old age statement. And these two are, are, are younger, they're just lovely. Really, really good. When you put these up against that, there's another fruit that I'm getting off of the 12 year old. It's that type of whiskey that you would like to sit down in front of a fire with a pint of Guinness on a rainy, miserable, cold day where you have nothing to do, all the time in the world to do it. Your feet are up, the house is quiet. If you have a dog, he's on your lap or he's next to you and how bad. You know, life is good. That's what that says to me. The other two, of course, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I wouldn't cancel them out at all. They are beautiful. The Three Swallows, also one that I always have in my arsenal of drinks for whenever anybody comes over. I may get a signature release because you know what? I really enjoyed that. I like the nose on that. It's quite easy on the palate as well. And if you wanted to take a break from the, the John's Lane, you'd go back and you'd try the other two. Or if you had the opportunity to be able to nose them all together. All right, I've waffled on enough. I've spoke enough about the whiskeys. Um, <laughs> I want to stop because I could easily light a fire and sit down and drink that all day long. Just put the feet up and not have a care in the world. But uh, a couple of things I want to let you know about. Of course, I've started a new whiskey group on Facebook. And if you're on Facebook and you like to talk about all types of different whiskeys, it's not just Irish whiskey. Although my, one, my idea when I started the group was to talk about Irish whiskey, but it kind of is growing into its own little animal now. And hey, look how bad. I don't know enough about bourbon, scotch or Japanese or Canadian or other world whiskeys to not allow that to happen. It's, I always want to learn about stuff like this. So if you are into whiskey and you have on a few groups on Facebook, have a look, I'll leave a link down below. Also on my Instagram page, I'm running a little competition that's gonna run for the next couple of days. Be sure to check that out. I'll also leave a link down to that. And of course, if you did like this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and of course, subscribe. Big shout out to the boys here in Christie's who uh, these, that's their whiskey. That's their whiskey too. That's the gold label back there. That weighs a little bit. This is all here for everyone. Once all these restrictions end, the coronavirus uh, is put to bay, uh, the vaccine is uptaken and the world starts to get back to normal. All this is waiting here as well as I am to enjoy a drink with you and have a chat about Irish whiskey. We'll talk to you in the next episode. I have a couple of big things coming in the next few weeks. As I said, we're going to be doing the Powers Gold Label, the original, 
but I'm going to do a little bit of a twist on it and I'll bring in the new bottling as well. A couple of big things planned. Keep an eye, subscribe, turn on notifications. Don't miss out. We'll talk to you very, very soon. We'll get you more videos. Slancha.